This is an industrial 55 gallon plastic drum. A set of these drums may be used to build an efficient heat storage system with the help of a few PVC baffle pipes. Conventional heat storage tanks use internal heat exchange pipes to preheat water. Unfortunately, conventional solar hot water tanks are pricey, so we'll explore some homemade options. Batch heaters are inexpensive and easy to make, but they use the same tank to collect heat that they use to store heat, so they are not very practical in cold climates. Homemade rectangular tanks may be fabricated from 2x4s and plywood. They are waterproofed with EDPM and insulated with solid insulation. A PEX tube inside the tank transfers stored heat into potable water. This is how water may be preheated before it enters the backup water heater. Recycled electric or gas water tanks may be converted into storage tanks. To do this, wrap a coil of copper or PEX around the tank. The tube should be wrapped tightly and held in place with wires or duct tape and multiple layers of aluminum foil to increase the heat transfer rate. Bubble pack may then be wrapped around the tank to provide insulation. There are many ways to collect and store solar heat, but you should understand that the efficiency of heat storage and heat transfer is at least as important as the efficiency of the collector. Remember, heat is only exchanged when there is a difference in temperature, so if water is supplied to the collector at the same temperature as its return to the collector, there will be no heat gain. This is why heat stratification within a storage system is important. Within a single tank, water naturally stratifies into hot and cold layers, as long as the turbulence is minimal. This happens because the hot water takes up more space than the cold water, so hot water is lighter than cold water. To increase stratification and heat collection efficiency, two or more tanks connected in series may be used. I've been using 55 gallon recycled plastic drums for my experiments because the price is right and the conversion process is easy. Most companies are only interested in the contents of the drums. Once the drums are empty, they become waste products and must be disposed of or given away. To turn plastic drums into heat storage tanks, all you have to do is wash them out, cut off the lids, and drill a few holes. A two inch rubber boot is used to join a set of drums. The actual outside diameter of a two inch boot is two and three quarter inches, so we'll need to drill two and three quarter inch holes in the side of each drum. A rubber boot is then inserted through the holes to connect the drums. The boot should fit snugly and line up with the holes, but this alone will not provide a waterproof seal. The boot connection only becomes waterproof when a 2 inch PVC pipe is forced through the boot to press the rubber against the rim of the hole. The 2 inch PVC pipe should be about 6 inches long. That's all we need to join two drums, but we're not done yet. Let's drill a hole for the pump connection and finish the stratification plumbing later. The pump should supply the collector with the coldest possible water from the storage system. A hole towards the bottom of the cold drum should do the trick, but we'll need more than a simple boot to connect and support the pump. For this connection, we'll use a bulkhead connector. After the drums are joined with a rubber boot and the bulkhead connector is installed, we can add some additional plumbing to separate the hot water from the cold. To do this, we'll need two 10-inch PVC pipes and two 2-inch two PVC elbows. As you can see, these pipes siphon cold water from the bottom of the hot drum and deposit it on the top layer of the cold drum. This is how the coldest water from the storage system is supplied to the collector to maximize collector heat transfer. Heat from the stored hot water is transferred into the well water supply through PEX tubing 
inside the drums. I used 300 feet of half-inch packs inside each drum. The stored warm water from the cold water drum preheats the well water in the cold drum before it enters the hot drum. At a flow rate of one gallon per minute, the heat transfer efficiency into the hot water heating system was close to 100%. In other words, the temperature differential between the hot drum temperature and the heated well water temperature was negligible. For this reason, I believe half as much PEX could have been used to transfer the stored heat.